everyone. Thanks for joining our weekly program, Sunday Feast program. As we know that we are doing virtually and uh, we have been continuing to do this since the pandemic started. So today's class is on passion to compassion. His Holiness Bhakti Marga Swami, popularly known as the walking monk, took to a monk's life in 1973 as a youthful 20-year-old. Prior to becoming a monk, he shows on the family farm in Chatham, Ontario, Canada, and was a college student of fine arts. His works are extensively and internationally featured on radio, television, in the newspaper, and film. Now, over to you, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Prabhupada. Om Magyana Tamarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha. I was born in the darkest ignorance. My spiritual master opened my eyes with the torch of knowledge. I offer my respectful obeisance unto him. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. And I'm happy to be on board with all of you devotees from the Scarborough District. I am suspecting some of you are from Toronto. I think there's some people here from Mauritius and also South Africa, if I'm not mistaken. And Haribol out to all of you. Jai, thank you. If I miss somebody, please forgive me. My great apologies. I'm just a spirit soul struggling in this world. I have very little knowledge. Uh, if there's anything there at all, it's because of the mercy of Srila Prabhupada. My Guru Maharaj, your Guru Maharaj, and the Guru Maharaj of the universe. So our uh, topic today is to deal with passion to compassion. So uh, let's look at these words. And I'm going to, I love to open up with some words of enlightenment from Srila Prabhupada first. The verse that I've chosen to connect with this topic is in chapter 2 from the Bhagavad Gita. And the Sanskrit goes like this, Ashochan on Vrishochastvam, Pragyavadam Shibhasase, Gatasun Akatasun Sha, Nan Ashochan Dipandita. So the translation to this verse is as follows The Supreme Personality of God had said, while speaking learned words, I'm sorry, while speaking learned words, you are mourning for what is not worthy of grief. Those who are wise lament neither for the living nor for the dead. And in the purport, the Lord at once took the position of the teacher and chastised the student, calling him indirectly a fool. The Lord said, you are talking like a learned man, but you do not know that one who is learned, one who knows what is body and what is soul does not lament for any stage of the body, neither in the living nor in the dead condition. As explained in later chapters, it, is, uh, it will be clear that knowledge means to know matter and spirit and the controller of both. Arjuna argued that religious principles should be given more importance than politics or sociology, but he did not know that knowledge of matter, soul and the supreme is even more important than religious formularies. And because he was lacking in that knowledge, he should not have posed himself as a very learned man. As he did not happen to be a very learned man, he was consequently lamenting for something which was unworthy of lamentation. The body is born and destined to be vanquished today or tomorrow. Therefore, the body is not as important as the soul. One who knows this is actually learned. And for him, there is no cause for lamentation, regardless of the condition of the material body. So those are Prabhupada's words from the purport, which is another word of saying support. Um, Prabhupada is um, 
echoing what Krishna is stating, Arjun was trying to pose himself as learned and trying to convince Krishna, now let's look at this case very seriously. We're about to engage in a warfare and um, according to what our elders have told us, according to what pundits and others have said that those who engage in this kind of warfare, uh, you are actually putting a stop to religious principles at a time when we're supposed to be protecting our fellow members, family members, uh, women, children, etc. We are now, uh, you know, passionately going about engaging in uh, this kind of warfare. This would incur sin. This is what I understand from hearing from the scholars of the past. So that kind of triggered a uh, message to Krishna and a response that, well, you think you know so much, but I'll have you know that there's something more important on the table here. And that is that uh, we are not these bodies, we're spirits. And because the body has a temporal quality to it, and the spirit does not, rather the spirit always was, is now, and always will be. Therefore, we give more prominence to the soul. So the study of the soul uh, weighs heavier than the uh, uh, study of the anatomy of the body and the, the way the body is designed and the, some of the dynamics of the body, such as like when it's being attacked by viruses and so on and so forth, you know. What, what could be the outcome of such thing? And what is the outcome of doing exercise and, and getting some vitamin D and doing things that are wholesome and healthy? What's the outcome of that to the body? So uh, people are always analyzing what you do for your body, but what are we doing for our soul? Like say, during the pandemic, there's a great concern about let's try, try to uh, you know, avoid uh, you know any bacteria. Uh, uh, you can you can smell the bacteria in here. You can you know the viruses are all around, and you may die. And of course, we have to guard ourselves against these things. That's largely done by building up our immunity. That might show uh, demonstrate a little more compassion than than the other. So. Um, yeah, we definitely have to be very proactive in this area. So in terms of talking about passion, so if we look at a kind of the meaning or the definition of passion, it usually refers to a hard drive towards some goal, an almost unstoppable and irresistible uh, you know, desire that's gnawing at you, uh, a great crave, you know, uh, and if it has speed, it's in high speed or high gear. That's usually what we mean by passion. In, um, in Christian teachings, when they talk about passion in the Bible, they're referring to, like, well, like as in the passion of the Christ or something like that. Uh, there is, uh, usually they refer to the suffering or the endurance, uh, the pain of Jesus. Uh, that's how it's used. I remember when walking uh, through the prairies in Manitoba, in particular, there was one spot where they were staging, hosting and staging the play, the Passion Play. And that, that's all about Jesus, his story and so on like that, and the things he, he, uh, that he went through. So generally, passion implies something that where there's a, there's a very strong sense of um, desire, as mentioned, karma, and uh, which is uh, perhaps a little bit out of control. And in our teachings, Krishna's teachings in the Gita, passion is referred to in Sanskrit as rajas. And rajas uh, can be translated as, you know, again, going with high speed as sort of restlessness and uh, not the most favorable situation to be in. It's highly motivated, uh, usually very self-centered kind of desire. And there's nothing wrong with desire. Desire is a symptom of the soul. You know, if you desire something, it means you're alive. Once you lose a sense of You're practically a dead individual. 
So uh, passion means to really, uh, uh, and rajas uh, means to uh, be in a mode where your thinking is somewhat obscured. You, know, you can't think clear. And as we sometimes say, you know, uh, you know, think before you speak, process before you act something out. So this, I think, passion is very clear. If I say, I have a passion for swimming, I have a passion for hockey, I have a passion for, uh, let's say, um, you know, to learning architecture. Uh, this means that you have a strong desire and it's not necessarily a bad thing. But a passion sometimes needs to be tempered by, by wisdom. Uh, by greater knowledge, and it's this greater knowledge that is being referred to by Krishna to Arjuna. So now you're 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 speaking like a scholar, but I'm going to outscholar you. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something that's of greater importance, and and therefore, well, we need not lament. We need not to get overly emotional. Now, when I first read. This verse, the Shuchan on the Shuchasum, Pragyam Vadims Chavasim, Gatasum Agatasum Chavnanu Shuchati Pandita. I thought that, well, this is a little bit extreme. You know, we shouldn't have any feelings for others. And uh, I remember looking at the pictures in the Bhagavad Gita, and there's this one picture here, uh, which I don't know if you can see it on the screen here. The one to your left, I guess it is. Yeah, we can hear, we can see Maharaj. You can see it, okay? Yes, it's uh, okay, Maharaj. Very good. Maybe there's a little bit of a glare. Excuse my telephone for that. Uh, and there, those who are wise lament neither for the living and the dead. And you see, people are grieving over the dead body of someone, and it looks like it's family members, and they're all distraught, and you know, really, and uh, yeah, very much mourning, uh, as in M-O-U-R-N-A-N-G, uh, mourning. And then we have the sannyasi who looks like uh, Kirtananda. Some of you may know Kirtananda, the Swami in the past, one of Prabhupada's disciples standing there with a the stick and, and looking at them, almost condescending. And I thought it was a little extreme, this kind of depiction. And uh, but, but on the other hand, there is truth to this that um, we need not lament for that which is going to uh, be disposed of. You know, I mean, the body, really, when we look at it, it is made up of elements that's going to be trashed. Really, it's going to go to the ground, or it will meet with fire. Or in the case of the Parsi communities, they are the, uh, the vultures come after the body is put on a pyre up high and the birds have a chance to get at it. So the, the body uh, is composed of what we call, you know, just leftovers, trash. And so uh, there, there's something that nature is telling us right there about the uh, nature of the body, you know, that it is a disposable and it's biodegradable, thank God. It's not going to be like a plastic dynamics that hang around for a long time. It will go. It will. So let it be. Uh, let it be. And so that is um, the way that uh, it, it is looked upon by Lord Sri Krishna. Do not become overly emotional about that, which is, you know, needs to go in another direction. We need to look at, to uh, redirect this compassion, you know, and compassion like compassion, um, that is something the passion is already there, but let's put our passion towards compassion. And compassion has a whole different meaning and understanding. It's actually about uh, the sensitivities towards other people's feelings. Um, whether it's physical uh, pain that people are going through or some psychological hurt, uh, we should have some compassion. And there's a phrase that is used, you know, Prabhupada presents many times as paradukha dukhi. So people are suffering. And so uh, the uh, learned person is one who feels the pain of others. You know? uh, if there is, others are feeling pain, naturally we should feel it as well. 
that is a quality in the mode of goodness. And Arjuna could actually see that pain was coming and he was feeling pain uh, and uh, very much within uh, uh, to the point where he kind of lost it. So then um, he, uh, you know, Krishna helped him with this and uh, redirect his uh, feelings and sentimentality to put it in the right place and the right spot. And the compassion that uh, is referred to in the Bhagavad Gita by Lord Krishna is that, let us consider the nature of the soul. Now, if we flip over to chapter 16 from the Bhagavad Gita, Prabhupada gives some illuminating purports in there. The chapter is entitled Divine and Demoniac Nature, and Srila Prabhupada very much elucidates on um, you know, this uh, idea of uh, compassion and uh, where to place your feelings. Uh, again, he reiterates uh, that the point that uh, the body is not as important as the spirit, the atma. The atma is what persists and moves on and on, but it's the body that is, as we described, is decomposable, and it will be reshaped and reformed to be something else, take on another, you know, form of another creature. So that's what's important. Um, compassion does mean, uh, mean to be as, uh, to be sensitive uh, towards others. I'm going to give you some quotes that I picked up on that I think are really pertinent. Uh, it's, it's not that devotees or uh, students of Bhagavad Gita should not demonstrate feelings. We should. Um, that is what bhakti is all about. It's about feelings, but hitting the right target, you know, uh, uh, placing the feelings where they ought to be or need to be. So uh, from Plato, he said, be kind. Everyone you meet is uh, fighting a harder battle than yourself. So oftentimes we get very like, uh, like self-centered in the sense that uh, we feel, why am I having so much difficulty? Why isn't anybody else? And if you actually would go around and do a little bit of a survey, you'll find that everyone's got a story to tell. Everyone's got something to cry over and uh, that causes tears to, you know, create floods and rivers and oceans, you know? So, uh, you know, don't feel so bad. You know, you're not the only one that's getting hit. You're not at the hit list alone by Maya's got everybody on the hit list, and you think you're number one? No, it's not like that. It's absolutely not like that. It's very, very different. So I, I think we can take that example from Plato that everyone else is really going through more pain than yourself. This is a very good outlook on life. You see, it's not like you're being picked on and everyone else is excluded. Uh, you're being left off the hook in most cases. You know, you're. You've got it better than everything else. And that puts you into the mode of optimism, which is the mode of sattva goodness. You know, like, again, I want to, you know, like in the past, we talked about the three energies, goodness, passion, and ignorance. Always shoot for or target for sattvic qualities, qualities in the mode of goodness. Here's another quote. The only way out of the labyrinth of suffering is to forgive. Okay, forgiving is a difficult thing. It's something that Brahminical people do or Vaishnavas do, especially as a regular practice. You forgive. If someone is, you feel they're shooting darts at you, instead of bearing a grudge, which is very heavy, um, weighs heavy on the heart, best to go the light route. And the best one is to forgive and approach that individual, not so much as an enemy, but rather as a friend. So <clears throat> what we like to see is more compassion and less judgment. Judgmentalism is something that's very, weighs heavy on the soul and is very uh, well practiced. It's a, you know, a preoccupation by most of us conditioned souls. Uh, we need to spend a little more time with softer feelings towards others. You know, don't play hardball, play softball. <laughs> the compassion is the basis of morality. This is from Arthur Schopenhauer. 
Um, morality is a word that appears in Bhagavad Gita. If we look at the last verse from Bhagavad Gita, Sanjaya, the speaker of the Gita actually, is making a remark and has this amazing realization about uh, dwelling on the dialogue between Krishna and Arjuna. So he says here, uh, nit niti. Niti is uh, what comes about as a result of reflecting on this philosophy. So there are four uh, states of wellness that come about from studying the Gita, and not just studying it, but really imbibing in it, embracing it, and putting it to your heart. Yatra Yogishwara Krishna, Yatra Parato Dhanura Dharaha, Tatra Shriyar Vijayo Bhutir, Dhruva Nitir Mantir Mama. So the translation, wherever there is Krishna, the master of all mystics, and wherever there is Arjuna, the supreme archer, there will also certainly be opulence, that's the first point. Uh, you, you'll have a relatively good uh, life, you know, a fairly uh, relaxed life, re relieved of a uh, lot of trauma. There will be there will be less than what would normally come your way karmically. So opulence, victory. There will be great moments of achievement and success. There will be extraordinary power. Uh, and uh, these Sanskrit words that I'll give to you. Uh, which you can sort of refer to. Uh, Shri means opulence. Vijaya uh, refers to victory. And then Bhuti, uh, ex uh, exceptional power. And then finally, we mentioned morality, Niti, morality. So morality it comes as a, as a result of compassion. Uh, compassion, it's the basis of morality. When you have feelings for others, you lay down policies. If you're like a and in the government, you're working for the city or the nation, on the federal level or provincial level, whatever the case may be, and you're in a position to lay down policies, you definitely have to consider the sensitivities of others. And of course, policies are laid down for protection. So we have to consider you know, the sensitivities of as many people as possible. And that's why to be in a governance position is not always easy because you, it's hard to satisfy all of the people all of the time. But if you lay down policies, which is meant for ultimate, the ultimate wellness of people, uh, you know, driven by sattvagun and the mode of goodness, then uh, you're in a better spot and it becomes easy to lay down policies. Uh, therefore, like if you ask everyone to give their two cents worth, uh, you're going to get a, you know, Myriad of uh, myriad answers uh, to your particular question, and many people will base their needs on my sense gratification. Like during this pandemic time and the earlier stages, I think it was in Prince Edward Island, they were closing down the uh, the liquor stores, you know, and uh, it was felt by at least the lawmakers that this is not essential. But there was a ruckus about it. There was this, uh, you know, people were there was. I guess you could say there was so much beefing going on. And so because people consider this is essential, I have to have my booze. Christmas or not, I have to have my booze. So it's, it's a matter of you know, who's speaking and what is for one's ultimate good. Surely the, uh, when you drink your liquor, it doesn't hit the spirit, it doesn't hit the soul. So the Dalai Lama had something to say about passion. We're not going to leave him out because he definitely speaks from the mode of goodness. Love and compassion are necessities, not luxuries. Without them, humanity cannot survive. So this is a good point that compassion uh, must be inserted into our life, the feeling for others. Um, and if not, if you come, you know, hard hearted towards all issues, then uh, this is uh, an indication that uh, um, you know your your spirit soul is not developed. Um, compassion for the body is one thing, but for compassion for the soul is definitely of a higher level. So we're talking about different gradations. And here's one that actually came from Gandhi: a quote, "It is easy enough to be friendly to one's friends." 
But to befriend the one who regards himself as your enemy is the quintessence of true religion. The other is mere business. So yeah, it's it's easy to be, uh, you know, to have be all smiles with your buddy, you know. Um, but if someone has a, a reputation for being nasty, uh, that's when uh, compassion has a, has a chance. Real compassion, true, deep rooted compassion. Is, okay, let me have a feeling for this person. After all. There is a spirit in the heart of that person who tends to be a bit nasty. There is Paramatma and there are God. There's two Kshitragyas. Krishna talks about Kshitragya. The body is uh, referred to as a field. And the Gya means uh, the one who's sensitive about the field. So in each and every one of us, there are two Kshitragyas. I have feeling sensitivities towards my body. If I'm feeling some kind of arthritic pains in the legs, it means I'm feeling it. But others don't feel it. But the second, or let's say, or the primary Shaitragya, which is God, the super soul in the heart, also understands those sensitivities, you know, and those feelings and sensations. So um, again, uh, the directions are more towards the needs of the soul of the spirit. We were not denying the needs of the body because we have in our culture Ayurveda, which is supposed to, like I said, our medical ancient medical practice, practices that we apply to the body and the mind and the soul, and ultimately to, to the soul. Yes. Um, so there's a need to for good upkeep of the body, but in the end. Um, the Vedas teach that uh, uh, you'll be kicked out of your condominium at some point in time. You're going to be out of that uh, dog kennel of yours, you know, and uh, you'll be uh, you'll be out. You're going to you you have to flee. You have to move on to the next one. That's your destiny. The next one meaning the next body. So compassion is really a symptom of the soul. It's also quality of the divine. Uh, I'm going to flip over to, to chapter 16, and I hope you Prabhus can do the same as well. When we talk about chapter 16, we're talking about the first three verses that deal with uh, uh, the qualities of what's divinity, right? And so compassion is on our list here. Uh, the uh, way that it's translated from the Sanskrit, um, just looking for it here. Yes, okay. Uh, daya Bhuteshu. Daya Bhuteshu. That means having uh, mercy towards others. Mercy is a good word uh, to understand compassion. Have sensitivity towards others. And then Srila Prabhupada does speak a bit about compassion. And again, we should have our compassion placed more on the spirit, that which is has the quality of sat and not asat. Sat means to be eternal. So Srila Prabhupada certainly had feelings for others. Uh, um, it was out in Mayapur during the 70s, and there was a big festival, and devotees were eating off their prasad and their mercy off of uh, banana leaves. You know, and uh, even on the those persons who came along the brahmacharis in most cases, they'd pick up the uh, remnants of the you know banana leaves, and in some cases there was prasadam left over, and that was all just kind of bundled together and then tossed into a pile. And as soon as that arrived, that fresh you know let's say uh, re remnants, the dogs started coming. Uh, the mangy dogs. Uh, that uh, stray dogs, as well as children. Children were coming and, uh, you know, hungry children uh, uh, were, we didn't have enough. They were going for the scraps. And there was a fat fight, a battle between the dogs and the children. And Prabhupada saw this from some, some uh, let's say, meters away. 
And, you know, he became tearful. And from that point on, he felt that, um, you know, we should uh, have prasadam distribution. We should have a food for life program. And he said, no one within a, within a 10 mile radius of a, any of our temples should go hungry. You know, that's the quote from him. So he was showing great compassion on two levels. First of all, children are hungry. They need, their needs need to be met. And secondly, it was prasadam. That would be of benefit on two levels, nourishment to the body, nourishment to the soul. Um, <clears throat> there's one case that Giri Raj Maharaj talks about that shows Prabhupada's compassion. In the Boston Temple in the early days, uh, where there was uh, Peter who was coming around, and Peter was uh, demonstrated symptoms of being a little bit irregular, a little bit eccentric perhaps. And he would be in the hallway and he would just sort of sit there by himself and then, you know, or like what would be the foyer. And if any newcomers would come around, you know, Peter would be sitting there or lying there, you know, on the floor. And this would be the first introduction for some people. <laughs> so uh, devotees didn't want to be harsh towards Peter, uh, who seemed to show these eccentricities and idiosyncrasies. And uh, the devotees didn't know what to do, so they uh, wrote to Prabhupada and they asked for his take on it. You know, what should we do with Peter? And Peter, Prabhupada was uh, implying that, well, where is your compassion? You know, uh, you know, the devotees were somewhat inclined to ask him to get to leave. You know, there weren't many people coming, and they weren't making too many devotees at that time. And so here comes somebody showing some interest and. We'll spend some time in the group classroom or you know where the devotees were conducting class and puja and peter wouldn't actually be there uh with them for the whole time he'd be outside and as i said just kind of hanging around a bit so Prabhupada was saying that well show some compassion so where's your patience well, patience and compassion have a lot you know when they're married together you've got a great combination and so uh, time, uh, Peter got to be known as Crazy Peter. So time passed on. Giri Raj Maharaj, he uh, went to the, uh, 20 years or more later, he went to the L.A. temple. And then he saw Peter. He, he actually saw Peter. And, uh, and he had inquired, uh, Giri Raj inquired from the local devotees, well, who is he? Said, oh, this is a person. Yeah, he's uh, he is who he is. Uh, but uh, he's initiated, and uh, he's uh, he's got a, he does great work for the BBT, and he does uh, translations, and he's scholarly, and his name is Kushakrata. And if anybody knows Kushakrata, he's written many books, <laughs> translated a lot of work, and he does a mighty fine job. So. It was astounding to Giri Raj that uh, this person had made transformation. So if you do see somebody at the temple whenever we get there in the future again, and if you see somebody hanging around, that could be like a you know, crazy Peter and who will transfer. So we have transformed into you know, an angel. So we, uh, you know, we definitely have to show this uh, kind of compassion for people. Of course, if someone is very disruptive, then that's another story. Uh, but uh, we have to always use the law of discernment, you know, always, uh, you know, draw a line, you know, in cir all circumstances, you know, use discernment, use your good intelligence. Okay. So uh, compassion is something that we show in our Krishna consciousness movement because we want to get out there. We want to help the conditioned souls. You know, In most of the uh, Hindu and Jewish traditions, uh, people are content. Oh, we have our Brahmins, so we don't have to convert anybody. Everyone's taken care of. Um, and uh, if you're born into it, then it's fine. But if you're not born into the culture, um, so in ISKCON, Prabhupada has encouraged us to go out and reach out. And uh, I don't want to say proselytize, but enlighten and share this wisdom, this great gift, you know. Uh, and uh, 
give to live or live to give. <laughs> that, that mode is what we want, that spirit we want to uh, express. If, if, let's say, the teachings of the Gita was reserved only for people of Southeast Asian culture, or for people from the South where you find some Brahmins, or the Kashmiri Brahmins from the North, if it's only limited to them, then I wouldn't be anywhere. I would just be, uh, I would be a lost child. So I'm not claiming to be anything great, but I do feel that uh, because of the mercy factor or the mercy principle that lies deep in the heart of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, that I have been saved. You know? So it's, uh, everyone can be saved. And how do you get saved? How? It's through seva, it's through service that we can be saved. This is the key thing. You know, do something selfless, service, something that will uh, lighten the burden for others, uh, making life a lot easier. So nobody can really claim to have a monopoly on, uh, um, let's say, liberation or moksha or salvation from this world. That liberation comes from a change of heart, and that can come from anybody, anybody. So uh, we, let's take the example of uh, Haridas Thakur during the Chaitanya Leela. Haridas Thakur came from an Islamic background, and he became a Vaishnav. Of course, his community didn't have any compassion for that adjustment, and he was severely beaten uh, and flogged. And uh, in 22 different uh, marketplaces, uh, he didn't resist. He kind of accepted it. You know, he turned the other cheek, so to speak. But, uh, you know, uh, uh, let's say there was very little compassion demonstrated uh, towards him from some of his community members. I'm not saying all were, but uh, it just, uh, it Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was compassionate. And he thought, let's, I, we accept anyone who's, who comes forth and demonstrates the high quality of eagerness towards seva, towards service to the, to the divine, to Krishna. Yes. So let's look at our compassion and where we are directing it, uh, because it, it can go in any way, shape, or form. If we have compassion for the ways of tamas, Ignorance, oh, every, why don't we try to uh, help people from their tamas, tamagun, which is in the mode of ignorance, and try to elevate them. We, we heard about the story of crazy Peter and how he evolved, you know. So let's help people in their evolution. Oftentimes it starts with offering them a little prasadam because everybody loves good food and that we are known for. Uh, in our society, good prashad, of course, you know, because the doors are closed, it's not so apparent, but we're going to get there. We'll get through this uh, difficult time. And we will be able to uh, share our great uh, treasures. The three treasures are <coughs> prashad. The other one is um, the sacred sound. And the third one is the sacred wisdom of what we were just been talking about. So that's where compassion lies in, let's say, sharing these three, like, like a trident, these three elements that Prabhupada has given us. So I'm just going to look at my time here. We still have some time, believe it or not. Um, other examples of compassion. Um, we should not demonstrate uh, the sense of being judgmental towards others. We have to look more at the spirit, give the spirit a chance. And if Nityananda didn't show compassion to Jagai and Madai, which we read about in the Chitan Charitamrita, then uh, they would not have the chance to become great devotees and a major branch in the Chaitanya tree or the Nityananda branch of the sacred tree. If you read the Zisi, the Chaitanya Charitamrita, you'll find that um, there are many, many uh, saints connected to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself. 
And uh, two of those uh, saints that came along uh, that were part of the Chaitanya Nichananda dynamic uh, are, um, were um, Jagai and Madai. And they, they were demonstrated great mercy. And if it wasn't for that mercy, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wouldn't uh, uh, be accepting these things. They wouldn't have a chance. I remember speaking about Giri Raj Maharaj. It was my first time to India in 1978. We did a program at uh, Agra. Uh, just, uh, it's a trip from Delhi. Agra is a place, famous place of the Taj Mahal. And Giri Raj Maharaj was giving a, a talk there. Uh, it was somewhere in India. If I maybe have my details somewhat wrong. But I remember him speaking very slow and succinct and to the point the whole story about Jagai and Madhya and how debauched they were and how they were womanizers and they were thieves and they were they invoked violence on others you know they were criminals and they even gave the police a hard time and uh, you know the details are there uh, if, you know I do these plays sometimes and uh, I've, I travel around, I see other theater productions done by like community theater by our devotees. And that seems to be the most popular presented uh, drama, the story of Jagai and Mani, who were totally drunk, and Nityananda showed them so much mercy, so much kindness. You know. So it was Chaitanya and Nityananda together who actually uh, showed a lot of mercy. Now, where I am located right now, I'm looking out the window, and I can see the CN Tower. And whenever I see the CN Tower, I don't just think this is like a monumental building. I think of C and uh, N. I, see, I think that this is the Chaitanya Nichen and the Tower showing some kind of mercy. Of course, the tower looks a little bit like a syringe or something, something that's going to be injected into you. But uh, frankly, Chaitanya Nichen and the, they actually. Uh, inserted into the hearts of people so much love, so much prema. And that is the Chaitanya tree. In the book, Chaitanya Charitamrita, the Lord, Sri Chaitanya, indicates that I am the gardener and I want to, uh, I have this fruit, it's harvest time, and the fruit is prema, love of God. We have to take it figuratively, of course. And he says, I have this fruit of love of God, and uh, there's so many fruits that have come in the harvest that I can't just pick them all. You know, I need some help. And so in answer to his call, all these saintly people came forward and be became part of that tree uh, to help distribute them. Right. So let us get into the distribution. Let's have compassion on all conditioned souls. If you're not spiritual, that means you are, uh, let's say, uh, qualified for getting some compassion. Compassion should come your way. And who's going to demonstrate that? It's the devotees. So some or other, we have to figure out ways and means to get over our, uh, let's say, inhibitions or apprehensions about approaching people. Because I know sometimes, oh, I don't want to approach those people. They're kind of, they're known to be snobby. Well, figure out how to do it so that we it, it won't be uh, you know it won't be such a big task you know you do it through food. The the last time I was at uh, Guyana and I missed this year because of COVID. Last year we had the Rathiatra in Guyana. I, I'm sorry, Trinidad. I'm gonna say Trinidad. Yeah, and so we went to uh, the one of the major cities there where they conducted the Rathiatra. And then we, the devotees rented this space, a big parking lot. And I was talking to Guru Prashad Swami, my dear friend, who's the sannyasi there in charge. And he said, well, very few people are coming here. If they sell, if they just gave free doubles, which is like two buns with some chickpea, it's like everybody's favorite doubles, you know, and it's a little bit on the spicy side, that everyone would come, you know. So I guess we just have to figure out what it will take to get people to receive this mercy, this compassion, which is coming from the source, Krishna himself. He is compassion. Sits on the heart as Paramatma and is feeling what others are feeling. And it's up to us to extend that helping hand by giving bhakti, planting the seed of bhakti 
into the hearts of all the conditioned souls. Thank you very much. So we filled in some extra time and we do have a little uh, period here for your questions, which is usually the most exciting part. So uh, um, I guess we can go for, for the, we can go for the Q and A and uh, as much as we go over the CNA or CNN. CNN, yes. C. Chaitanya and N. Nityananda, for their mercy. Does anybody have any questions or whoever's conducting this, uh, you know, whoever's hosting, do you want to guide us here? Is Ananda there? Um, Hare Krishna, uh, Maharaj, this is Amal. Amal. So, th thank, thank you, thank you, Amal. Thank you uh, Maharaj, for giving a wonderful class today on this auspicious Shatila Kadashi day. We are very blessed. We have a question later. When passion is good, overcome passion. When passion is good, overcome passion? Yes. Um, let's take the example of Arjuna on the battlefield. To be successful at his service, at his seva, was to be extremely attentive to his surroundings. The uh, you know enemy or so-called enemy coming at him, and being very sharp at his responses and his reflexes, um, so naturally he would have to project passion. Um, so it's properly placed because he was fighting a just war, and Krishna was backing him up all the way. Uh, let's say you have to build a house. Why to protect yourself from the elements? To build a house means a lot of passion is applied, a lot of muscle power, a lot of sweat, a lot of fatigue, a lot of sacrifice, you know, to build a house. It's not an easy thing. Even for those guys that use all the, the tools, the caterpillars, and, you know, with the, you know to lift things, and it's, it's not an easy job. It just is not. So a lot of passion has to be applied uh, in order to, uh, you know, um, just to for your sustenance. So um, if we can, a, a devotee, person by right means, thinks that I am building this structure uh, because for my needs, me and my, my family have our needs and they need to be met. And by the way, they're not my family. They're Krishna's family. They belong to him. And so I am doing some service by working at the sweat of my brow and uh, so that uh, they can benefit, others can benefit. It's not just all about me, you know. So this is where compassion uh, is uh, placed. And it isn't without compassion because you're thinking about others. So uh, when it's the physical power, uh, you can say there's passion. And when there's, uh, let's say, feelings from the heart, that's compassion. So it would seem to me that um, we can apply a certain level of passion. Like passion is uh, initiated by compassion. I have feelings for these other people. So I'd, I'd like to do something for them. Recently, our devotees in Montreal, uh, they were told by the police, you cannot chant. You know? We don't know who you are. We don't know. That somebody's joining you from your community and you know we've got a, a severe lockdown so we're not allowing you to do that so the devotees thought deeply well what can we do to reach out to the conditioned souls and so the devotees checked with the city and said yes you can distribute prasadam so under certain conditions of great strictures they were able to get their tables out and put on the public and uh, have their prasadam play, uh, spread out so that people can be recipients of this wonderful so devotees felt compassion for the uh, for those who are in need, and this is in the winter time, by the way, as you know, it's colder now. And they were compelled to act. So your action, your karma, that what you're putting out, that is passion, right? And what uh, and you're doing for their soul. So it was compassion that projected the passion. Okay. So I would say that in many cases, it's a uh, Compassion that is the first in line, really, uh, and not the cart. It's the horse that is going to drink, and not the cart of the horse. 
So I don't know if that answers your question, but you know, I think that you don't have to eliminate passion. You just have to direct it properly. Just like we have to direct compassion in the right place. Do not misplace it. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Nicely answered, Maharaj. So nice that I remember you, this thing. You are nice. You are nice. I'm not. <laughs> We are nice because you are nice, Maharaj. <laughs> so, thank you. So the thing is that's what I got from here. In passion initiated by compassion. Should yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Nicely said, Maharaj. Nicely said. Maharaj, there's another question. Can you it's not questions request that can you just elaborate a little bit about three secrets? Prabhupada. Uh, left for us or gave us like uh, this, you were saying prashadam, sacred sounds and sacred knowledge. So this sacred or secret? Yes, uh, sacred uh, is maybe the more appropriate word. And for those who don't know about it, haven't picked up on it, it would be a secret to them. <laughs> okay, the three uh, areas of let's say sharing Krishna consciousness are in Let's say, let's start with prashadam. So prashadam is food that's blessed. It's been offered to the Lord. And uh, it's uh, that's done also with compassion behind it. You know? Feelings, sensitivities. I, I want to feed my Lord. Uh, he doesn't need it. He's atmarama, self-sufficient. But I feel there's a need for me to serve him. So it might be a little selfishly driven if you want to analyze it like that. But... Uh, you know, when you take prasadam, it's uh, people here in Toronto, we, Govinda's is open for takeout, and people come very loyally because they realize, well, this is uh, food that's specially blessed. It's not like ordinary food. And uh, so, uh, you know, I, I partake in it, and I feel much better. Uh, it's food that's meant for the body and the soul and bringing them together. And uh, this, this is one way to encourage your practice of uh, spirituality. So prasadam is the greatest weapon, Prabhupada said. And, uh, you know, in order to deal with the enemy, the enemy is not so much people. The enemy is, you know, the lust and the anger, the greed, and so on and so forth. You know, it's the, it's not the uh, sinner that we're going after, we're going after the sin. So if we uh, dis uh, administer prasadam, to the public are doing good work. Uh, secondly, uh, let's see, delivering uh, the sound, kirtan, uh, chanting Krishna's names uh, in the public. It's a sound that does not uh, enhance uh, one's lustfulness or one's anger, because most of the music we hear today is about lust and anger. You know, that's a fact. And some of it, well, that's become popular music. And then there's also something called the blues, which is a, like in the doldrums when you, you're lamenting about what you lost. You know? So, yeah, popular music is all about lust and anger and greed. When you, when you get, greed being the lusty one, anger being the, the very destructive one. And then you've also got, uh, you know, uh, what's the other one? Lust and anger and greed. Yeah, the feeling bluesy, you know, that's also somewhat tamasic or in the mode of ignorance. So to overcome this, we need to hear sacred sound. Again, it's something that Krishna loves to hear. He's the source of everything. He can hear everything uh, that's being uttered, that's, that, we're, that we are protecting from our mouth. Uh, and uh, he's very perceptive. And when we chant his name, it is like music to his ears. So if we want to please, then chant Krishna's name, that sacred sound. And then sacred wisdom, that's the third item. Um, you know, we've been speaking from the Gita within the last hour or so, and we are just giving some examples, trying to uh, see the world through the eye of this wisdom, the eye of Shastra, uh, so that we can cope with the world and also know how to maneuver through this world in a, in a better way. So it's an art that just has to be applied. That's all. If I'm to go on a dog sled with a team of dogs, huskies, you know, and I, I, I need to know how to use those reins, you know, uh, to get them to move in the right direction, you know. And, or as Krishna, 
he was so expert with his horses. He knew which way to go, go right, go left, go. And he would also go up. Krishna would take Arjun up in the air and then go for a plummet, you know. And so it's a matter of, you know, uh, moving, maneuvering into this world in, in the right way. And that we do by um, uh, absorbing this wisdom and making an application. Hare Krishna. I think Bruno had his hand up. Yes. yes Bruno, so that... you, would you like to uh, offer your comment or question? If anyone wants to uh, have any comment, they, I see some comments that they're more of, they're, uh, they're actually praising you for giving a wonderful class. Oh, but, that's, uh, that's you... part of the culture, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and I appreciate that. Uh, it's up to you. If you have any questions, uh, we can uh, put some uh, preference towards that. If you want to uh, share with us the comments, then you, Amal, you can do that for us. Yes. Okay. Uh, I see from Pitambar. I'll read it. Thank you, Maharaj. Oh, it left. It left. <laughs> oh, my mic phone. It doesn't stay long. Thanks so much. Thank you. I say thank you for, from Jagannath Mishra Prabhu. Jagannath Mishra. Um, yes, yes. Always and, so. And Jagannath Mishra Prabhu also mentioned that beautiful Maharaj of CN Tower, Chaitanya Nityananda Tower. Yeah, so. right. <laughs> <laughs> Just remember that these two personalities, they were very strong and tall. And they, they raised their arms, so they, they were towering figures. A yeah, wonderful, wonderful ex example, Maharaj. Whenever we'll see now CN Tower, we'll remember that this is Chaitanya Tower. That's good. <laughs> so you're, you're, you're giving very practical uh, practical uh, examples. I can't forget about the, the, the when you were saying that about crazy period. And I was thinking, we have so many crazy periods, even myself also crazy period. I feel Hare that Krishna, way. Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Yes, 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 sir. Prabhu, go ahead. Yes, I, I, I just wanted to request Maharaji from, from which pages of Prabhupada's book is he's referring for the mercy and everything like this. Yeah, and when talking about compassion, it's in chapter 16. It's in the first three verses of chapter 16. 26 and, qualities are listed. Oh, no, that, that is Bhagavad Gita. Yes. By, uh, but I wanted to know from, from you are referring from Swami Prabhupada's book, aren't you? So, Swami Prabhupada's book. So, which, play, which place you are referring to? Uh, in the Leela Mrita, you mean? His biography by Satsuri Maharaj. Okay. Is that what you're talking about? Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, in the Leela Mrita, I think you'll find the story about the uh, the food for like when the children were fighting with the dogs, the wild stray dogs okay, okay. For, for the leftover food. Okay, thank you. Hungry. Okay. I think that's where you're going to find it. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thank I, you. you did quite well, excellent. So well, I just have a request, uh, you see, the Anand Prabhu also, so to uh, arrange for such good lectures. You are giving. You have given yeah. lecture with excellent quality. That's it's nice. Just talk. So we yeah. want it to continue further. Also. Thank you very much. Well, Thanks thank a lot. So thank you for the nice comment. Appreciate it. Nice. So much. It's a pleasure, really. Yeah. Uh, thank you, thank you, Maharaj. Is there any other question? We are actually uh, we are touching twelve o'clock, twelve noon. And today is Shatila Akadoshi, and we all are blessed to have Maharaj among us. If you have any more question, please come forward. We can take at least one more question. If Maharaj agrees. If, no? Okay. There were lots of comments, and I thank you very much. Yeah, there are lots of comments. Lots of people are saying that uh, they actually enjoyed your class and they learned a lot from your class, Mahadas. And uh, uh, this today's class was very important. Every class is important from Mahadas, but today's class, I feel that this is very practical because this is a practical life. And we should, everyone should. Uh, understand that's the meaning of passion and compassion and any passion should be initiated by compassion 
So uh, nicely explained by Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj, for your wonderful time and association. We want uh, to you to give more time for this Skonescarbo devotees. Actually, you are speaking among not only Skonescarbo devotees, there are devotees from different other parts of the world too. Yes, I just saw Kala's name. I think he's from Mauritius. Yes, Mauritius, yes. and uh, sometimes people join from Florida and uh, uh, some uh, devotees from uh, other parts of Toronto, I see. So right. we are very grateful to everyone. And thank you, Maharaj, again. Thank you for your wonderful time and your wonderful class today. Thank you. Very Hare much. Krishna. So all Prabhupada's mercy. Hare Krishna. Hare thank Krishna. you so much, everyone. We miss Hare you all. Krishna.